I got a question in an email, which I'll read. When by the mercy of the Guru a disciple experiences detachment from the extreme influence of the material energy. Detachment, I guess the word is, uh, what, what's a, a relief from the extreme influence of the material energy within the heart and as a result experiences joy and peace. What more can one do to increase the attachment to Krishna when one realizes his position in relation to the material world? Is reading and chanting enough to increase that feeling of separation? I think I'm getting a bit mixed up with the words here. Separation from the influence of the modes of nature. We could use the word separation, but because we, <laughs> we use that term, uh, at least in English, Srila Prabhupada has used that term to mean a feeling of separation <laughs> in love from Krishna. That, that, oh no, I'm getting free from Maya. Oh, I miss you. <laughs> oh, I had such a long standing relation with Maya. <laughs> so it's, it's a bit of an unusual choice of words. Uh, is there more I can do to increase my faith? There are many questions in this genre of how to make advancement in Krishna consciousness, how to be more sincere, how to be more dedicated, in this case, uh, how to increase. If, if I'm feeling some sense of uh, detachment from, this, from the material energy, although don't be too confident of being free from Maya's influence, how can I increase my attachment to Krishna? The answer is the same pretty much in every case. Follow the process of devotional service. If there's some particular quality that you wish to imbibe, then associate with devotees who have that quality as far as you can. Uh, meditate on devotees who have that quality. Pray to Krishna. It's the general answer. Now, the the point associate with devotees who who inspire you because they have that quality. In this case, uh, developing attachment to Krishna. Oh, that will come if we go on hearing, chanting, remembering, serving, in sp in especially in the association of devotees. Then gradually everything will come in due course of time. Now he says, I lack. I lack proper devotee association even though I am surrounded by devotees every day. It is hard for me to talk about Krishna and what I am feeling. I feel alone in the company of devotees. I now relish the association of Srila Prabhupada through his books and lectures. I also feel pleasure in listening to my Guru Maharaj's lectures. He's a disciple of Kadamba Kanana Swami and your teachings. Is this healthy though for my Krishna conscious growth not having like-minded devotees in physical association. Um, it's hard to say without knowing the exact circumstances you're in. I have been in this situation myself where for months on end I was with devotees who are devotees, but not, you could say, at the level of commitment that I would have preferred them to be not very committed to giving up sense gratification or rising early and so on. So I did find it hard. It may be that you're in such association. One time one devotee was in Vrindavan. That time there were just very few devotees in Vrindavan. It was very, very difficult in so many ways. The, the temple construction of Krishna Balaram Temple and how they even begun. So one devotee wrote to Srila Prabhupada and said that that I, I don't want to stay here, I don't like the association, devotees are not very Krishna conscious and Prabhupada. Uh, I want good association. Prabhupada said, you become that good association and uplift others. That's a challenge. In conclusion, reading from his mail, in conclusion, how do we find a devotee association like the one from Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's book, Jaiva Dharma? My heart is filled with, with joy and happiness when I hear 
the wonderful exchanges from these elevated devotees. I hanker for such deliberations, or am I too over my head and I need to just relax? The topic of Krishna warms the heart. Yeah, we read in Jaiva Dharma, we read in, in the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, so many elevated devotees. Sheshongana Paya Kande Narotamadas. Narotamadas is lamenting that he couldn't get the association of such devotees, but then he had the association of Srinivas and Shamananda, and uh, even when they returned from Vrindavan, they had to go to different places for preaching, but Narottam was in the association of Ramachandra Kabiraj, so he had very good association. Again and again in his songs, Narottam, praise for the association of Ramchandra Kaviraj. So if we can get the association of very elevated devotees, uh, that is a great boon in our lives. Otherwise, we can associate with them by hearing about them, studying about them, praying to them. We can pray to devotees in Chaitanya Leela. We can remember them. That will help us. Good association is undoubtedly uh, very important uh, in devotional advancement. Uh, in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrata, we find mm, what is that? Uh, Bhakti Mulhoi. What is that? Krishna Bhakti Janma Mulhoi Sadhu Sangha Krishna Bhakti Janme Tabu Mukya Bhakti Anga. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that the very root of devotion to Krishna is the association of devotees. And even when one has attained devotion to Krishna, that still remains essential, having association. So it may be in some cases, some devotees will, if they're in a position to do so, they may change their situation to get association or remaining in the in their present situation, they may uh, associate the best as best they can through hearing, through studying books, by remembering. Nowadays we have the internet whereby we can hear different devotees, talks. Um, it's quite common now, It's it's become part of life in ISKCON that there are, we have Shravan Kirtan Kams, so or there are Bhakti Sangha, there are different get-togethers of devotees, and especially in the upcoming Kartik months, many devotees will go to Vrindavan, and there'll be Parikramas, so, so these are two enhance one's devotional association, especially if one is in a situation whereby you can't get that association so much uh, in your normal life. Most devotees uh, in ISKCON nowadays, they, they're working in some jobs with non-devotees and they come together once a week. Actually, we should... Oh, Preferably, we should be in association with devotees all the time. Srila Prabhupada, he wrote that one of the reasons he made temples, he made this society, is to provide devotee association. These farm communities also are meant for providing devotee association for grihastas, so they don't have to uh, live in the association of non-devotees simply to earn money. So exactly this is circumstances we're in, they will differ in different cases. Uh, but it definitely it's a principle as far as possible to get good association. And if we're not so fortunate to be in a situation where we are with devotees or with devotees who are very seriously practicing Krishna consciousness, then we have to adjust as best we can. And yeah, by reading, hearing, attending various devotional get-togethers and so on. 
that's I I can answer that as best I can because I don't know the particular circumstances. Then, aha, uh -huh. yeah, you also have a question. You wanted to ask me a question yesterday. The the question vanished, or you got the answer in your mind, or what? He's shy to answer the question. I can, because you uh, had a question, I thought I should keep time for some questions. Okay, soon. It, um, in your in the story you read on Ram uh, Radhastami, you said about like uh, well, put the mic up. Well, Lalita and and Radha Rani, you said that Lalita, um, you know, at the end she knew um, she was like joking with Krishna, with you know saying that you know like, you know they knew all along her and like Radha Rani, you know. Well, they didn't know all along, but it be, it became apparent toward the end of the story. Okay, so that was the question. I didn't know if, like she knew the whole time. That's how that I understand it. Okay. Okay. Sorry. 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 In a lecture, Srila Prabhupada, or in an address to his disciples, he says, he makes the concession that you only need to be 70% Krishna conscious to go back to Godhead. I was wondering what that would look like exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that quote either. I always used to 100%. Maybe someone devalued it down to, down to 70%. There may be, sometimes Srila Prabhupada said you have to be fully Krishna conscious. If you have a pinch of material desire, you have to take birth again. Frightening, isn't it? <laughs> I, I, maybe once he gave some statement that he'll, he'll, if there's anything lacking, he'll make up for it, something like this. I can't remember exactly. Seventy percent, and then okay. Sixty-two, sixty-three, sixty-four. I made it up to seventy percent. Okay, now we can go and eat an ice cream. That's in that. That's in the thirty percent, right? I'll keep my thirty percent. If we think like that, then we're not likely to make it. Baskin Robbins. It's all vegetarian, right? <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I've never, I've never, I've never gone to a Baskin Robbins <laughs> shop. Never been inside one. Fifty percent of my life is wasted. Is it? Is it? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't tried it. Yeah. Maharaj, one may pose an argument that because Kali Yuga is progressing so quickly and so rapidly and society is becoming so degraded, why should one waste their time, you know, working in the fields, digging up the grass? Rather, one should just invest all of your efforts and resources and strategies in distributing Srila Prabhupada's books. Why have farms? Why work hard on a field? Why not just distribute books? Or why not just go to Vrindavan and chant Hare Krishna? Why distribute books? Save yourself, right? Why work on farms? Well, one reason is because the great empowered Acharya Srila Prabhupada wanted that. Uh, that's, a, that's one answer. <laughs> You'll get his blessings by doing that. Of course, he didn't just tell us to work on the field, but to do it for Krishna, consciously for Krishna. Uh, but he wanted these communities established because not everyone's going to have that immediate urgency to fully be fully Krishna conscious overnight. And even if we do, still we have to do some work. 
produce food. So we should do that in show how people how to do that in Krishna consciousness. Make communities so that people can come and be Krishna conscious. Why not just yeah, run off to Radha Kund? Can we do it? Even if we can, we have to make facility for others. We'll see Krishna in the plants, how they're growing, the miracle. You put, you put some seeds in the ground and by Krishna's miracle that becomes vegetables. They offer that to Krishna. That's very pleasing to Krishna. Prabhupada said it's more, and we can experience that ourselves. It's so much more pleasing to offer vegetables that we grow and cut and bring the, then immediately cook and bring then you go and buy them in Walmart or something. It's so much more, we, we, we ourselves feel it's so much more pleasing to offer this to Krishna. And Krishna himself is pleased by that. That's devotion. The, the, the planting the seed, caring for the plant, all the time thinking this is to be offered to Krishna. So it's a whole meditation. Hmm. Raj, um, what is the difference in sinful reactions when offering meat to Goddess Kali versus not offering the meat? The Vedas give allowance to meat eating via yanya. What is the meaning of this allowance? What does this allowance entail? The allowance is a restriction that you can only offer once a month or less. So it's a restriction. Sin, still less sinful reaction, uh, but you don't do it every day. That's one thing. So in that way, it restricts the sinful reaction. And also by following the Vedic process, the sin is less. Because you're following the Vedic direction, yeah. the sin is less. Apart from that, it it uh, it this process um, it instills the consciousness that there are higher powers I have to submit to. It instills the consciousness that I should follow the Vedic directions and. By saying the mantra that now I am now I am killing you, in future you will kill me. It's supposed to now I'm going to eat your flesh, and in future you will eat mine. It it should instill some uh, sense of discrimination in someone who's uh, doing this. So it's a it's a calculated process for people who are very sinful by nature. Yeah, you have a question also. Okay. <clears throat> it seems um like it's very hard to change one's nature, like coming from like even now like when we were still karmis and now trying to be devotees, and that seems to often um, pose because of that a nature pose difficulties in devotional service, and even when you try to change it, it seems like you 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 can do it for some time, but it always seems to like drag you back. Vidhi bara balavan. Narottam Das Thakur says, Shune le na shune kaan. If we hear, but we don't hear. <laughs> yeah. so, so how, because it's like you, 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 again and again, but again it's just like, you can start to see Yeah, again and then again and again we have to apply ourselves to the process. Krishna's mercy is stronger than Maya. Maya is very strong. Daivi esha guna maya mama maya duratya mama eva ye prapadyante maya metam tarantite. Maya is very strong, but Krishna is stronger. So the sharanagati is the surrendering process. We can do it. Vita raga bayakroda man maya mama parashrita ha bahavo gyana tapasa puta mad bhava magata. These. Uh, 
material attachment is very difficult to overcome. Fear, anger, these are all very, all these tendencies are very difficult to overcome. But it is possible to overcome them, and many have done so in the past, Krishna says, and attained to me by taking shelter of me in the parampara system. So yeah, it's difficult, but by Krishna's mercy we can do it. We have to apply ourselves to the process. There's another common question, framed in various ways. Guru Maharaj, we saw in you know, the 70s, there were so many more young people joining as full-time devotees, brahmacharis, brahmacharinis. Um, nowadays, it seems a little more difficult or I'm not really sure. Um, what do you think maybe is the difference or um, what can be done to encourage more young people? It seems like people would just join and just hear about it and join right away and become full-time. Whereas now it seems pretty rare. Oh, that's a big topic of discussion. It seems to me there is good possibility for many people to join, but there's a mood and atmosphere has to be made like that. I spoke about that in the series of talks I gave. Why has this gone so wishy-washy? One of the factors was that, I believe it was in the 1980s, the hippie movement had died down and the yuppies came up, young up-and-coming professionals. The next generation was very materialistic, interested in getting a lot of money. So there, there were various factors, but now is a very good time, it, it seems. And if we had our farm, so many people would come. Even without farms, people can come and join. We need farms. People will come. They're interested. Men and women. Uh, there, there's great scope. We have to make the facility. And like I say, make an atmosphere. Most people don't even know there's a possibility of any such thing to join. That's why... Uh, this doing regular daily Harinam Sankirtan, it, it, it's great. Pub apart from purifying the atmosphere, it lets people know we're here and there's something going on. Otherwise, they might not know at all. So it's a whole package. We have book distribution, we have temples, we have Harinam Sankirtan, we have farms. So we have to build up momentum. Yeah, okay. Any question from the lady's side? Yeah, we have two hands. How many mics do we have? Two. Okay. That one's that one there? That's not recording. That is. Okay. All right. I I have heard devotees say things like um if somebody eats your leftovers from your plate, then you collect their, or do you collect their karma if you if they eat from your muchi plate? Is that true? Yes. <laughs> Maharaj, when in association with um, devotees, how can we develop a level of respect? for devotees in their various natures and where they're at in their Krishna conscious journey while avoiding fault finding. Then we have to come to the philosophical or the platform of understanding. Everyone who comes to Krishna is precious. Develop, yeah, it may not happen overnight. Mm. Hare Krishna. So I hear a lot about um, advancing in Krishna consciousness, and I, I hear a lot about advancing in Krishna consciousness. But you don't see it? <laughs> it's all phantasmagoria, is it? And my question is, when we talk about um, 
maintaining material life, my p- part of my question is, how can you advance while man- maintaining a material life? And how do you know you're advancing in Krishna consciousness? How can you advance while maintaining material life? You mean if you're in a situation like, uh, yeah, you're working in a job, something like that? Yeah, well, you can advance, do sadhana at home, and make time for sadhana. Follow, th- as, as, as much as we follow, that much we can advance, whatever situation we're in. Do humans always pray to Krishna when they're in the womb? No, not in every case. Not everyone in the womb prays to Krishna. That's described in the third canto, that someone who's pious and has that previous life propensity, they they may pray to Krishna in the womb. Not everyone, not every human child in the womb prays to Krishna. Guru Maharaj, in the Bhakti Siddhanta Vaibhava Guru Maharaj, in, in, in the rapid expansion section, there you were mentioning that, you, you write that, Bhakti Siddhanta Sajitaka said, Kurukshetra is, you know, separation, the separation is high, but higher than that. Well, the, the, uh, the possibility of service there is greatest. Mm. And then you, you write that Alalanath, that's twice as much, Dviguna, Dvigunita Vipralam Bhakshetra. And then the third, you said, is Kanyakumari. You know, Bhakti Siddhanta Sajitakuri, you said he, that he said that that's triple. I have uh, to read that book because people, <laughs> people keep on asking me questions. It's a long time <laughs> since I worked on it and I don't remember it all actually. I remember Kanya Kumari, Bhakti Siddhanta Sajitakuri said the deity looks like the Goranga deity at Sri Chaitanya Mart. Hmm? Yeah, well, that I remember. Maybe because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so far away. I, I don't remember exactly. Chaitanya, the, Kanya Kumari is the end of the world. <laughs> There's no further place than that to go except the Vivekananda Rock, what the heck as it's now called. <laughs> As it's now called. <laughs> just some stupid rock. Just off, t- I mean, it's just, what, 100 meters off the coast. The, the temple of Kanyakumari is right at the seashore, at the, just at the end. And about 100 meters off, there's a rock, where now there's a st- some statue. I, uh, people go out on a boat, and naturally I don't. I didn't go there. But... Uh, yeah, it's although actually traditionally Shetu Banda is taken as the end of the that that's the out of the four directions the, that's taken as the south, and that's where the Mahodadi meets the Ratnakara, the two oceans meet, and you can see what's called the, in English the Bay of Bengal and the Arabian Sea. You can see them meeting together. So that's Shetu Banda. The place where Ram made the bridge, which literally means make it bridge making, Setu Banda, which is also not directly connected with the great landmass of Bharata because it's on a small island. Just anyway, this is all what Bhaktisthan Sarsar Toko wanted to make a book called Paramartik Bhugo. Spiritual geography. That was among his wishes to make such a book. And there, there are thousands of holy places all over India which are not so, not even very well known. Just like now it's a suburb of Salem in Tamil Nadu, but previously it was just outside the town. There is Ayodhya Patanam, which is a place of Lord Ram's pastimes, but it's it's in the oral tradition. It's not in Ramayana. There's so many places like that. If I remember correctly, you know, it says that 
in the, the gopis worship I, I can't say I'd have to read it and okay. think about it again Mind you, I have a, like I say I'm out of touch I, people ask me questions I have to read the book myself <laughs> there's so many profound things in there but yeah. I, I don't remember that it's, it's like chalk a block every every line there's something so profound I mean, they, what you're talking about that that Kurukshetra is more of a place of separation than Vrindavan. Only, only people with very small constricted consciousness worship Vrindavan. And those who are really, <laughs> those who are really uh, in the know, they worship Kurukshetra. <laughs> oh wait a minute! Kurukshetra is the, it's just a place of piety, Dharma Kshetra, and that's the place of Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> It's typical of the kind of thing Bhakti Stan Sasa used to sing. The Sridhar Maharaj said, I heard that, I thought, I felt like I'd just fallen out of a tree. <laughs> <laughs> so I listened very carefully to what else was going to be said. And then on top of that, you have Alalanath, and then on top of that, you have Kanyakumari, which is a place where, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think it's a place for Vaishnavas to go at all, except that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went there. It's a place of Durga deity. What's she doing down there? She was born up in the uh, Vindya, in the Himalaya. She's also known as Vindyavasini. So that's halfway from Himalayas. And she got married in Madurai. How did she get down to Kanyakumari? I don't remember. I must have heard of that. Something like she's angry with Lord Shiva. Some Maybe sometimes she runs away and there's no further place to run, so... <laughs> That's the end of the world. <laughs> it may be. Right, it's, it's, it, you write that because they worship uh, Katyayani, the gopis worship Katyayani oh. in that mood. So like, you know, that it just like, I, I, I stopped understanding after yeah. that. I don't know what like, to think of. Certain gopis worship Katyayani, the spiritual the spiritual form of Katyayani. It is all very complex. I think most of the bodies here can't follow this at all. You, you have to be uh, deep into Hindu philosophy <laughs> to understand all these things. We see like uh, Prabhupada hammered the principle of Yukta Vairagya. Um, and even in instances on his farm communities, um, some devotees thought they would get chastised for having equipment out there, such as tractors and so forth. Especially in the West, it seems like taking on a lot of austerities of simple living may be overwhelming. Sure, simple living is, has its austerities, that's for sure. Srila Prabhupada said that machines could be used in the beginning. Just like, for instance, if you have land which is completely overgrown, it would make sense to first clear it with a bulldozer, for instance. Uh, yeah, austerities. But, the, but we don't realize how much austerity we have to go through to maintain the conveniences. To have electric lights and central heating, piped hot water, air conditioning, fans, and all these kind of things. You have to go and work in some miserable job. You live on the farm and just produce what's needed and then you save time for Krishna consciousness and you live with devotees and you become Krishna conscious. So there are pros and cons. But the great advantage of living on a devotee farm is that you associate with devotees 24 hours a day. So if you can accept one kind of austerity, you can have the facility of uh, having a situation which is conducive for advancing in Krishna consciousness. Okay, we'll finish there. We'll sing Hare Namah Krishna Yadavai Namaha to finish. Hey.
that uh, tradition, I don't know if anyone knows this anymore, but traditionally in Bengal, they'd finish up programs like this by singing that. Oh. Doesn't have to be, but you can sing it. Put it up. Haraye Nama Krishna Jadavai Nama Haraye Nama Krishna Jadavaya Nama Jadavaya Madhavaya Krishavaya Nama Jadavaya Madhavaya Keshavaya Nama Gopal Govinda Ram Shri Madhusudan Gopal Govinda Ram Shri Madhusudan Giridhari Gopina Chadana Mohan Giridhari Gopina Shri Chaitanya Nityananda Shri Advaita Sita Shri Chaitanya Nityananda Shri Advaita Sita Hari Guru Vaishnava Bhagavata Gita Hari Guru Vaishnava Bhagavata Gita Shri Rupsanatan Jiva Gopala Bhatta Dasa Raghuna Jiva Gopala Bhatta Dasa Raghuna Echai Gorsai Kori Charana Bandha Echai Gorsai Kori Charana Bandha Jaha Hoite Bignanash Abhishta Pura Jaha Hoite Bignanash Abhishta Pura Echai Gorsai Jamu Itara Dhan Echai Gorsai Jamu Itara Dhan Kashabar Pada Renu Mora Panchaga Kashabar Pada Renu Mora Panchaga Tadera Charana Sevi Bhakta Saneva Tadera Charana Sevi Bhakta Saneva Janame Janame Mahe Abhilash Janame Janame Mahe Abhilash Echai Gosai Jabe Praje Khoi Lobash Echai Gosai Jabe Praje Khoi Lobash Radha Krishna Nitya Lila Karila Prakash Radha Krishna Nitya Lila Karila Prakash Ananda Bolo Hari Bhaja Vrindavan Shri Guru Vaishnava Pade Majai Aman Shri Guru Vaishnava Pade Padma Kari Aman Shankitana Kare Narottamada Shankitana Kare Narottamada Haraye Nama Krishna Jadavai Nama Haraye Nama Krishna Jadavai Nama Govindaram Shri Madhusudan Gopal Govindaram Shri Madhusudan Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Rama